Having lost a brother, Mark Hodel, killed in 1968 in Vietnam, he was a Navy CB. I surely know what Memorial Day is about, and I would say that most everybody knows what Memorial Day is about. Right? We know that's a loss of life. It's the ultimate sacrifice, right? We get that. November 11th every year, Veterans Day, I'm not sure people really understand what that means. Um, I think they, they know to say thank you for your service, but I don't know if they know what the service is. Um, I didn't. So a lot of what my friends and family didn't know about after I came out of the military, they didn't realize like how much of an emotional toll it really took on me. They really don't know what goes on into being a military service member, especially the sacrifices that they give up and, the, and what the families give up. I enlisted because I didn't really want to go to college. Couldn't stand sitting in a classroom, just wasn't, wasn't for me. And I always wanted to challenge the few, the proud. I definitely wanted that. I had a big family history of everybody serving. So I felt like this deep urge to, um, to serve and to carry on that tradition. I wanted to just do something different with my life. From the minute you get in boot camp, it's three, four people just yelling at you and you have to be able to understand and know what you're saying. They start processing us. We make our phone calls home. That's when we get stripped of what we came in wearing and get our camis and get our gear. You're cut off from the outside world. And uh, and that's when I like to call it the programming begins. I mean, you're told what to do, what to wear, where to go, where to be. Um, you're structured in that manner. Um, you're told when to eat, when to drink. They teach you how to shave by the numbers. They are literally put the razor up, put it to your side of your face, stroke down to the middle of your chin, stop. And all of a sudden I feel a drill instructor's hand on the back of my head with my face on a mirror. And he's like, you do not move ahead. You go exactly where I tell you. And it's like, okay. I went from living in my own room with just my mom and I to now I have to share a bathroom and my entire living space with at least 60 other females. There's no privacy at all. I mean, it's a version of prison, I guess you could say. Just a decent version. You're not given a name, you're given a number and recruit. You don't you don't have like an you have an identity but it's not your own. Taking that individualism, that selfish attitude and behavior out of you and incorporating in teamwork, esprit de corps, camaraderie, those things that are instrumental in being a Marine. To be trained mentally to kick down a door, go into a room, clear it, even though in boot camp you're not necessarily live fire or getting the huge threat, but you're fighting, you're boxing, you're pugil sticking, you're marching, you're getting introduced to CS gas, stuff like that. Like that's not an easy thing to do. So, and that's an, a hard thing. I was told I was robotic as soon as I came out of the boot camp, right? It's, it's a hard thing to turn off. I had never achieved something so difficult in my life, just psychologically difficult. And it's not the idea of this brainwashing. No, they were making warriors. They were making war fighters. And they promised us when we joined the Marine Corps, we will transform you. And we, so we willingly go into that, but we don't know at what depth they're transforming us. The discipline and following direct orders is what saves lives. And, and it matters when there's lives on the line. When you enlist or you're commissioned into the military, you are writing a checkout payable to your life. And that at any time when the president says it's time to act, that you can be engaged so that, that they can enjoy this beautiful freedom that we have, that a lot of countries don't have. First time I was deployed into combat was in 2003, where the first unit into Iraq had the first casualty of war, Lieutenant Childers, who pretty much was shot almost immediately after we got in. We took a lot of wounded and uh, we lost another Marine. I wanted to be in combat. I wanted to go out and, you know, be with the rest of my brothers and sisters out there. But as time went on and I knew I was only going to stay in for four years, as my enlistment was ending, I knew that, okay, well, it's okay that I didn't go because I had all these other experiences. But what happened at the Kabul airport, that's when it really hit me. I had a couple of friends 
there. There is an explosive that went off and it killed 13 of our service members at the airport. Two of them which came from my hometown. Knowing that they were there and I felt like there was nothing I could do. But knowing that they gave like the ultimate sacrifice right there. The impact of combat can be so many different aspects. Losing friends, losing buddies, whether that's being on site or picking up their body parts. Unless you're psychologically, something's wrong with you. After a while, you want to go home. You, you miss home and you, and you realize how fragile life is and how quickly you could be killed or seriously wounded, especially when you start to see it around you. You, you get that fear of dying and um, it's, it's no fun to be away from your family and loved ones for maybe up to a year at a time. That spouse puts education, puts their dreams on hold, and they want an identity too, and, and, they, and they can't get it because they're packing up and moving every two or three years, and they could be stationed in Adak, Alaska, and maybe not a lot of opportunity out there for, the, for them to grow as an individual. So they sacrifice a lot as well. There are three types of people. There's the first type of people is the, the sheep. Normally put them as civilians. The sheep are there and they're in every culture. But then within the sheep, you have the wolves, people that would prey on the sheep. They're the criminals, they're the terrorists, they're the things that they prey on the sheep populace. And then you say you would naturally have sheep dogs. The sheep dogs that, that stand up to protect the sheep. Commonly, we are law enforcement, be your first responders, but the military stretches that metaphor a little bit because it's a little different. It's more of like you get a bunch of sheep dogs and you put them together and you make them very aggressive and you send them out to run around and find the wolves and they're very effective at it. But then the problem is we get back and you pull them away from the pack and then you just drop them into the sheep. And then you say, you're a sheep now. There's gonna be some problems with that, especially if you treat them like they're sheep. Especially those individuals like myself who've done 20 something years, you have such an identity and you're so used to that culture and to make that transition into the civilian world is very difficult for a lot of us because um, you know, you're used to a high level of respect and when you don't get that in the civilian world or you don't get that teamwork that you're used to, Veterans struggle with that. We've lost a lot more, you know, a lot of friends and people we call family, right? And then we get dropped into our homes and when we come back and that support system we had most of the time, you know, I'm lucky to have a couple here, but a lot of my best friends are spread out throughout the country. It's gonna be that readjustment. It's finding your identity or sense of belonging, finding that purpose again. We knew what our purpose was and it was clear, it was distinct. Now we get out and it's like, well, nobody's gonna assign you a purpose anymore. I've been in the workforce for 40 years and I know there's a lot of misconceptions out there about veterans. PTSD is way overused, as you'll hear a lot of our veterans talk about. They're on the edge, they're broken, they're depressed, they're suicidal. For the most part, that's not true. And I think we need to better understand our veterans so that we can give them a purpose because that is going to alleviate any of these issues that they may be dealing with coming out of the armed services. A job is one of the most important things that can be given to a veteran. Some of the things positively that I take from the military into a regular civilian workforce is I'm able to get things done quickly and efficiently. My current job that I'm at, they, everyone is always so shocked that I have such a great work ethic. And then I tell them, well, I was in the military for four years and they're like, oh, well, that's where that great work ethic comes from. I can always count on you. We are ingrained to lead by example. We're never gonna expect their, their men and women underneath them to do something they would never do. You've been given structure, structure is good. You know, especially in this day and age, they have that, that work, work mode. I get it told it all the time. The confidence that you can overcome any obstacle, that the saying improvise, overcome and adapt, these are the things that you use 
and you incorporate it into your civilian job. And I think that's why a lot of veterans are a little more prone to the procrastination, that feeling of pressure, because we thrive in that. It's living, living up to that task or that challenge. And not only that, but I think the leadership. When I was deployed, I had to relearn all those things in a couple days, and then I was teaching the next day. In the corporate world, it may take you four to six years to even have that simple experience. Employers, they don't know exactly how those experiences are valuable. They don't know what they adapt to. And that's on our part. We got to learn to advocate for ourselves, but we would ask the civilian po populace, try and understand us. Understanding has power. Don't look at us like we are broken because we came from being strong. We came from being powerful. But now it's time to adapt. We have to adapt to be what our family and our society needs us to be. We have so much to give once we've adapted. What I'm hoping is when people watch this video that faces and names will come to their minds of those who have enlisted and that they'll reach out to those people. And hopefully this video is gonna give you the ammunition you need to be able to go and say, hey, you know what? Not only thank you for your service, but thank you for your sacrifice. I realize that just going in a boot camp is a sacrifice that your family sacrificed. No matter where anybody has served in the armed forces, it's all sacrifice. It's all commitment. It's all putting others first. It's across the board. And I'm just so grateful for all of them for keeping this country safe. And that, you know, when we say thanks for your service, that we'll say, no, thanks for your sacrifice. <laughs>